This tutorial is just going to give a brief overview of the Yahoo Finance Market Data Downloader Python package. So I will post the code when I'm done as well as a link to this project file or um, description, changelog, everything. So thank you to the author and maintainer, Ran Arousey, for putting this together. So first things first, I created a folder um, for the project and then a generic Python file and um, I typically start my scripts with figuring out which version of Python's running you know you, you could also when you're running the script uh, designate that but it's just a practice I've been in so all this does is say what version of Python and then I'm importing the Yahoo Finance package as YF and then just printing out what version that is uh, if you don't already have it, um, you can do pip install. That's how I would do it. Y finance, and then it tell you that your requirement is already satisfied. And then I'm just going to run this uh, Python file that's just going to tell me what version of Python I'm running and what version of Yahoo Finance. All right, so let's get started. First, I'm going to just define a function. So Y finance tutorial and I'm going to feed it um, a ticker symbol. So ticker symbol in the financial world is like for Tesla it's going to be um, TSLA and so we will run Y finance tut for TSLA and TSLA of course is Tesla so let's just print the ticker symbol and we'll run that and it should just say TSLA, right? Is, oh. We do not need tomb. That's a variable, that is not a string. So that's the error there. So it's just going to say the Python version, Yahoo Finance version, and then TSLA. Okay. So we can erase that. So first thing you're want to do want going to want to do is kind of initiate a Yahoo Finance um, th this basically just grabs all all of the data and then from that you can start digging down and getting some information. So one of the function that it has is just general information. So let's print that ticker info. And so all this is saying is our ticket data ticker data is all of um, this associated with the ticker. And the first thing we're going to do is just print the info. So this is going to print quite a bit. symbol is not defined. That's because this should say ticker symbol. Alright. And it's going to put it out in a dictionary, Python dictionary format. And so from there you can drill down and get a little bit uh, more basic information. So like here's the symbol if you want to print that. Here's a very kind of long description of what the company does or what the ETF represents or that type of thing but let's just start out with getting the name of the company so we'll do call it investment because it, do, it doesn't technically have to be um, a stock like I said so that's just going to be ticker info dot or it's accessing it, so short name. And then let's just print that. And in addition to running it for Tesla, we'll put a space and let's run it for one of my favorite investments, which is VOO or the Vanguard. 
S and P 500 index ETF or exchange traded fund. So just to show you that it can run it for both. So there's Tesla Inc. and Vanguard SP 500 ETF. So that's basically just giving us the ticker info. So we can print. Okay, so let's say we wanted the most recent value of that stock or company. So first things first, you know, every day is going to change. So we need to import daytime. And then we're going to do date time dot date time dot today and we're going to put it in ISO format. So we print I'm not going to run it yet and then we will do get the historical data so ticker data frame is equal to ticker data which is from up here this is getting all of the Yahoo Finance information for that given investment so ticker data history and let's do period will be one day start Let's do from the beginning of the year, so 2021, January 1st, and end, we'll do today. And you only need the date. If, um, if you do today in ISO format, it's going to give you all the hours. So the first 10 characters are going to be just the actual date. So 2020-2020. 202-01 for February 1st. Then we want the last price. So we'll do that ticker data frame. And from there we want close, which is the closing cost. And we want the last one available in the data frame. So we're going to use iLook. So then we'll print. And let's make it clear. So we'll do investment plus and price less. And let's run this, make sure everything's running. I probably have some air in there. That will get flushed out. Today I'm enjoying a nice 21st Amendment Brewery Tasty IPA, and it is very good. 6.8% alcohol, 70 IBUs, seasonal release, very good beer. All right, so it says we cannot convert NumPy Float 64 object to string implicitly. So basically what that means is I want this to be a string because it's a float and you can't print a float as a string and so you have to convert it obviously all right so that's the date today and like I said um, the first 10 characters are one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10 will just give me the date. So the last price for Tesla was 650.57. We can verify that by just Googling Tesla. And we should see 650.57. So the date is accurate for Vanguard. Last price is 295.69. Alright, so we will stop printing today and
let's just get uh, one more piece of data let's get you know the previous days price and so we're just gonna do minus two and then we can do the change over those right so price last minus price yes change equals yeah we need to make it a string all right so let's run that so it went up nine dollars and seventy six cents and the Vanguard S&P 500 went down five dollars and forty cents okay so that's a basic introduction the um, the only thing else I'll show is just the full data frame so you can see all the columns that are available So we have open price, the high, the low, and then the closing price, volume of sales, dividends, and stock splits. So, you know, pretty valuable information, and you can drag this out over, you know, a much larger period of time. Let's go back to 2010, and we'll just, well, we can run it for Tesla. I think Tesla's been public since 2010. So let's see if it's able to gather that much data. This is, you know, 10 years worth of data. So it is. Um, so in 2010, closing price was $23, and now we're at 650 for Tesla, obviously, large amount of growth. And for the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, uh, $83 in 2010, and now we're at 295 Again, substantial growth. So, pretty useful package. Uh, I'm really happy that they've put something together, and it's just uh, another option rather than using Google Finance and Google Sheets, which requires, like I said, authentication. And sometimes I, I find that it's not updating correctly. So... Thank you guys for listening and post any questions in the comments and, you know, we can work together on learning more. Thank you all.